Hello, friends. Welcome to the last day of our skate Valley Skater Knit dress from Sinclair. This is a free pattern from Sinclair, and it is a great pattern. Whether you're a beginner or a little bit more advanced, um, if you're a beginner, it's a great look at how amazing Sinclair's instructions are. I really, really like how thorough they are, and the pictures that they include are very helpful. Um, but if you're a little bit more advanced, it's really excellent because it's a great kind of blank slate pattern, kind of what I think. Um, something that you can change and make your own. So if you are more into wanting to get into like pattern hacking or um, yeah, just kind of drafting something on your own, um, this is a great base to start with and then you can kind of change things up. I really, really love it. So today is going to be hopefully super easy, super easy. We will be attaching the bodice to the waistband, the bodice to the skirt <laughs> using a waistband. Um, pardon me. The way we attach the waistband is a little bit different than um, we'd probably think of because it's not, it almost creates like a belt looking effect. So um, it's just a little different, but it's still super easy. Um, so yeah, let's get to it, right? All right. So first thing, you should have two waistband pieces. You want to do this because what we're going to actually do is it's kind of going to enclose the seams so it doesn't feel so bulky and irritating right there. So what we need to do, though, is we need to prep these waistband pieces. We're just going to fold them long sides together, or long sides, right sides together, long ways. Don't fold them in half again because we're not doing a regular band. You just want to fold them in half just one time. And then we're going to sew along this short edge here using a quarter inch seam allowance. I got a little extra. Got a little extra. Friend trying to tag along. These snips. All right, all right. Quarter inch seam allowance along that short end. And then we're just going to do the same thing to the other one. I cut this one on the bias because I thought it would make a cool um, waistband. Just kind of a cool different between the skirt and the top. Be a cool transition piece. All right, now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and mark my quarter points. So again, that seam, I'm gonna put it down towards the bottom and at the top is gonna to be my first quarter point. There we go. And match the seam and the quarter point that I just marked. And the top and bottom of that are gonna be my third and fourth quarter points. Okay. And then let's just go ahead and do it to the other one as well. That way, they're nice and done, and we don't have to do it later. Quarter points. The seam on the bottom. Match the seam in the one that I just marked. And top and oh. This one. I cut it real close to the salvage edge. And so I just wanted to kind of hang out. I wanted to feel like it was part of the project. Okay. Mark those quarter points. All right. Now that we've got our waistbands quartered, what we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> our skirt. And... Making sure that our pockets are nice and enclosed there. We are going to now quarter our skirt. So match those side seams together. And that'll give us the first quarter. 
in the second quarter. And then I believe the side seams are the quarter points, the other quarter points. But just want to make sure before. Yeah. And then the side seams will be our third and fourth quarter points. Okay. So right sides together, the um, waistband piece that you want to be on the outside, you're going to put that right sides together with your skirt piece. So just matching up those quarter points. And when you get to those pocket seams, make sure the pockets are closed and not split open. And what I mean by that is just that they're, the pockets are in like pockets should be, not hanging out for all to see. Oops, this one came unfolded. This one came unfolded too. You can iron this down, um, iron it. Hey, it's not supposed to be full. What on earth was I thinking? <laughs> I didn't pull the other two. Uh, brain fart. Okay, now that we have that attached right sides together, what we're going to do is on the wrong side of the skirt now, we are going to attach the right side of the other waistband piece. So again, just lining up those quarter points. I'm making sure that the hem or the seam from the putting them together are, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. I hope I told you the right way to put the right side to the wrong side because I almost did it opposite. So we're putting the right side on the wrong side so that when it flips up, you're going to see the design that's on your pattern or on your fabric and then the same with this when it flips up so I'm going to line those seams up and then just go through and line the rest of my quarter points so again we're putting the right side of the weight the second waistband piece the inner waistband piece to the wrong side of the skirt piece Matching up those quarter points. All right. Now, our skirt. I missed one. I knew it. I was like, that seemed a little too easy. Our skirt should be sandwiched between our waistband pieces. So think of the waistband pieces as the bread. That's got the fixings on it and it's holding the meat of our sandwich together. Hmm, I wonder if I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, and then we just wanna make sure when we sew them together that all the raw edges are aligned. We might need to do a little bit of stretching, but not much to make sure it, it goes in. And then you also want to make sure when you're sewing around the, the waistband that your pleats are laying nice and flat and that you get the whole thing. Because this is a quarter inch seam allowance, um, it can be kind of tricky, but you got this. Um, if you're using a regular sewing machine, a 
um, stretch stitch. So zigzag, lightning, triple step, stretch, all of those should work. And we're just going to sew now around the waistband, aligning those raw edges. Just making sure my waistband or my skirt is attached. You can um, clip it or pin it in more places as well if you are wanting. Sorry, very serious. My skirt keeps wanting to dip down a little bit, so I want to make sure that I catch that. All my raw edges are nice and lined up. lift our waistband up, you'll see the design or pattern print on the waistband on the outside and then also on the inside. Okay, now what I like to do with this um, is just go through and make sure my waistband has been fully attached everywhere. Um, sometimes, especially with slippery fabric, you can, and then a quarter inch seam allowance. It's easy to miss just a little bit and you wanna make sure you check it before you attach your bodice. Other words, you're gonna to have to seam rip the bodice off and it's a nightmare. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> all right, I think that looks pretty good. Next, I'm just gonna check and make sure all of my pleats are caught. So right here, I can see that this one's not caught quite as much as I would like. So I'm just going to go back through and get that piece just a little bit more. Just because I want them to be nice and attached and not have any of the raw edge be able to pull out. Okay. Okay, that's better. Good. What you good? All right, that's good. Okay, now we are going to flip our skirt inside out, and we are going to find the quarter points again. So, where the seam of where we attach the waistband together is that's my first quarter point so I'm going to find the spot exactly opposite that and then match those quarter points up Whoop. and then on the other end here All right, now we're gonna take our bodice. Let me think about this here for a second. Because we want right sides together. I did not do that last time. <laughs> and it was a mess. It's 
the right sides together match at the seam side seams. Okay. Okay. Because the picture that they show is slightly confusing. Because um, what they do is they flip their bodice wrong sides out. And then instead of tucking it in, they um, have it on top and align it that way. But what I prefer to do is I actually like to take my bodice and make sure that right sides are together because we don't want to have to seam rip again. Actually, before we do that real quick, we I'm going to just quarter this really, really fast. So the side seams are going to be the first two quarter points. We're going to match those up and that'll give us our second and third quarter points. Okay, so now we're gonna slip the bodice inside the skirt through the waistband. And now we have right sides together. Okay. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the side of the skirt, which is where my pocket is. And I'm gonna match it up with the side of my bodice. Now I also wanna make sure that my seams are at the back of my bodice, not the seam for me. Perfect. Okay. So we're just gonna match those quarter points up. I'm having like flashbacks to the last so long. And I'm like, oh man, don't do it again. That was oh, so frustrating to get so close to not making any mistakes and then the last thing I do. It's okay, just showing you I'm human. Okay, so we're gonna match up all those quarter points. There we go. And now, just like when we attach the waistband to the skirt, we're going to make sure our seams are or a quarter inch seam, and we're going to sew around the waistband. Um, yeah. So this one won't be enclosed. The seam won't be enclosed, but that's okay. Okay. So just making sure that all my raw edges are here. I'm not trying to go anywhere. Okay. Quarter inch seam allowance. We're just going to sew around the waistband and just making sure raw edges are nice and lined up. do is I'm going to pull the bodice off of the top and then check. Just check to make sure that it got attached nicely. We're not missing anything. And that's always the worst when you think you're done with a project and then you have to go back through because you missed a little piece. All right. So there we have now our finished dress. All we have left is to just hem it. So, move you out of the way. Okay. 
I use a cover stitch when I hem, but you definitely don't need to. You can use a twin needle and a regular sewing machine, um, a regular, you know, um, stitch. If you're doing, um, if you're hemming though with just like a regular, not a twin needle, I would do the lightning stitch just to make sure um, you have a nice, not too crazy line or the triple stretch is another good one for hemming just because again, it's more of a straight stitch. Um, you can totally use a zigzag stitch when you're hemming. I just don't love the look of it. Um, for weight, for arms or the waist or the bottom, it's okay. But um, I like to also tack down my neck and I don't like the look of it on the neck. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my seams are down and I'm gonna start on my neck and I'm just gonna tack that seam down um, or top stitch it down, I guess. But I'm just gonna go all the way around. Just making sure that that seam stays down. I hate hemming. The cover stitch, it's not so bad, but still, this is my least favorite of any project. <laughs> I think it's just because it tends to be a bit more boring. Like the project's done. I just want to wear it now. Why do I have to do one more step? <sighs> and I know we could have done this um, on the day that we did the top, the bodice, and on the day that we did the um, skirt, but then today would be really short. Okay, and then I just like to go over my hems or my beginning stitches, just like an inch or so. And I'm gonna pull these threads to the front, clip them, yank them to the back, and clip them off. And now we've got a nice, clean neck band where it's not gonna wanna flip or flop. It's gonna stay pretty well put. Okay, so now for our sleeves, I believe hems are half an inch foot. Let me check. Okay, yeah. Oh, one inch. Okay. So we're just going to flip in one inch. I am just, I guess, me a lot of my hems. I mean, it's not too too crazy but um, you can definitely go through and do create a memory crease on these if you fold it and then iron it it gives it a nice crisp clean marking so when you go to fold it or when you go to top, hem it it's not slipping and sliding you have a nice uniform um, length. And then you just want to make sure you get right on the edge. If you don't get right on the edge, I do recommend going through and just kind of clipping off the, the little bit extra. Okay. So just like, know, we're going to yank those to the front, clip them, pull them to the back. And when you pull it to the back, what that does is it brings the stitches to the back of the fabric instead of on the top and it locks them in really nicely. So that's why I like to go over the beginning stitches a bit because then it helps lock those stitches in as well. So again, fold over an inch. And I just clip those 
stitches from the beginning, or the threads, not the stitches, the threads from the beginning, so that I don't run them over. Um, when you run over threads, it creates just a small gap, nothing too crazy. So like if you do it, don't freak out. But it creates a small gap between the thread that you're sewing with and the fabric. Which just leaves it open to, you know, popping or something going wrong. So we're getting caught on something. So I like to try not to do it too much. All right, last one. This is going to be the big one. We've got to hem the skirt. So again, you can definitely do a memory hem for this. Um, since it's such a big piece, I would recommend it. But I'm me, so I'm not going to. I mean, I do recommend it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so just all the way around, one inch. <laughs> I know I should be like talking about something. Profound right now. I'm just coming up with a complete blank. I wonder what that says about me. <laughs> this is the perfect twirly. Like grown up version of a twirly skirt. <laughs> I always see the twirly skirts. I love them. So creating a memory hem or um, pinning your hem, it just stops you from having to start and stop so much. I have to start and stop just to make sure like, oh yeah, we're still in control. We haven't gone to some crazy depths. You know, my one inch has all of a sudden turned into a four inch or anything mm -hmm. like that. That has happened, so. There, I can see the end. There we have it. Sorry, my thread got caught. I was like, I don't want to go. And just like that, we have a fully complete Sinclair Valley knit skater dress. And super, oh, how cute. I love that color combo. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought I put the seam in the back, but I put it in the front. Oh, well, no one will notice. <laughs> I thought for sure I had lined it up correctly. 
it's always one thing, right? I feel like when I make something, if one thing isn't quite perfect, it's not a make by me. So, <laughs> but in three super short days, each day was about 30 minutes. I mean, we completed a dress. So in three 30 minute days, you too can have your own Sinclair Valley Knit Skater Dress. That's my sales pitch. Free pattern, awesome pattern. As you can see, super quick, easy. So um, even with those pleats in there, it's, that is not, it's, it can be an intimidating um, technique at first, but like most of our techniques, I think once you see it and do it, it's like, oh, why was I worried about that? That's actually super easy. But we did it. We have a completed skater dress. I... I always feel bad because I want to put it on and show y'all, but then it's like, I have to walk out of the screen because I'm not putting it on camera. Awkward. Um, but I will definitely have a picture of it in our um, sew along group. So if you are watching this on YouTube, definitely check the description. I will have not only the link for the pattern and the fabric in each of the videos, but also the link for our Facebook group so that you can show us your awesome Val Sinclair Valley Knit Skater Dress. Uh, that's a big name for a pattern. <laughs> I always am like, am I saying it right? But I cannot wait to see yours. And I will definitely share a pic of me and mine because I absolutely love it. You might want to go through and just um, iron your hems just to make sure they're nice and flat and straight. But if you did the memory hem, you already did it. So no worries. I guess maybe I just like doing it at the end. I do I do iron it just at the end. Anyways, we did it. It's done. Yay. Um, next week we are doing, uh, I can't remember. There's like a million things on my plate. <laughs> next week we are doing the Stitch Upon a Time Callista Curvy Bra Top Tunic and Dress. And then I'm actually going to be running that in conjunction with the Stitch Upon a Time Ursula leggings that we were going to do a couple weeks ago, but we switched it out for those super cute fiasco, Petite Stitching Company, <laughs> um, Tristan leggings and Colby bra. So we're kind of doing the same thing, but with Stitch Upon a Time patterns this time. Um, the le the It's going to be a little different. The bra will be in our group and the leggings will be on um, in the YouTube channel, but then I'll have the bra over here too. So I guess if you're watching on YouTube, you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> um, but yeah, that'll be next week. I'm super excited. I love bra and legging sets. I don't know why. They're just fun. And these leggings have a super cute diamond cutout in the, um, in the bottom and like the calf portion. I was going to say thigh. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, you could, that might be kind of fun, but, um, and the calf portion of them that I'm really excited to try out. So I think I'll be doing that one. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that is next week. And thank you so much for joining me. This has been a great, fun, relaxing, easy. So, and I cannot wait to get this on and wear it because it's super cute. <laughs> I will see you next week though. Thank you so much. Bye.